In this video, we're going to talk about how to draw the Lewis structure of CO3 2 minus, the carbonate ion. So the first thing that we need to do is that we need to add up the valence electrons of this polyatomic ion. Carbon has four valence electrons. It's found in group 4A of the periodic table. Oxygen is a calcogen in group 6, I mean group 6A and it has six valence electrons. Now we need to add two valence electrons because the overall charge of the polyatomic ion is two minus. So let's do the math. This is gonna be four, three times six is 18, 18 plus two is 20, and 20 plus four is 24. So note that we have a multiple of eight. Whenever you get a multiple of eight in terms of valence electrons, and if there's no hydrogen atoms present in the structure, this tells you that the central element, in this case carbon, is not gonna have any lone pairs on itself. It's only gonna be attached to bonds. So because this number is a multiple of eight, we don't expect to have any lone pairs on the central carbon atom. Now, carbon wants to have eight electrons around it, and each bond represents two electrons. So in this example, carbon's going to have four bonds. If each oxygen gets one bond, in order for carbon to have four, one of the oxygens has to be double bonded. Now, when oxygen has one bond, it's going to have three lone pairs and a negative charge. Whenever oxygen has two bonds, it's going to be neutral, but it's going to have two lone pairs. So this is the Lewis structure of the carbonate ion. If you want to, you can enclose it in brackets, but that's how you draw the Lewis structure of the carbonate ion. Now, this double bond, you can move it anywhere among the three oxygen atoms. And as you do so, you're creating what is known as a resonance structure. So if we were to take a lone pair, use it to form a pi bond, break the pi bond here and push two electrons on that oxygen, we can write at least one resonance structure of the carbonate ion. And it's gonna look like this. So essentially, the double bond moved from one oxygen atom to the other. And it turns out that these two structures are the same. That double bond doesn't really reside on one of the three oxygen atoms. In fact, that double bond is really shared equally among all three oxygen atoms. So the real structure of carbonate is really a blend of all three resonance forms, where the double bond is here, here, and here. So let me see if I can draw the resonance hybrid. So that third double bond, we can represent it with a dashed line to indicate that that double bond is shared among the three oxygen atoms. This is known as a resonance hybrid. But we're not going to get into all of that detail. But this is the Lewis structure of the carbonate ion. Just know that the double bond is shared equally among the three oxygen atoms. Now this particular structure is trigonal planar. That's the molecular geometry for the carbonate ion. And trigonal planar structures, they typically have a bond angle of 120 degrees. Now for each molecule, it can vary. It could be slightly different. But on a test, if you have a structure that is trigonal planar, the bond angle will be 120 or something close to it. Now the hybridization of the central carbon atom is sp2. Typically, whenever you have a trigonal planar structure, you're going to be dealing with an sp2 hybrid orbital. An sp2 hybrid orbital is basically what it is, a, a mixture of one s orbital and two p orbitals. So imagine blend them together, you get this hybrid orbital. So that's what the sp2 hybrid orbital is. It's just a, a mixture of 1s and 2p orbitals. 
So that's basically it for this video. Now you know how to draw the carbonate Lewis structure. You also know its molecular geometry, its approximate bond angle, and the hybridization at the central carbon atom. Thanks for watching.